welcome to a very windy day. I'm doing another World Heritage episode and today I'm at the Liverpool Maritime Mercantile City. Now it's a UNESCO World Heritage site, obviously <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be doing this episode. And it was added to the list in 2004 and as you can tell it is really, really windy out here today. So what's the importance of Liverpool as a city? And in case you wonder what that noise was, that was one of the ferries leaving. Well, Liverpool was one of the biggest trade ports anywhere in the world during the 18th, 19th and into the early 20th century. And it represents a time when Britain was at the height of its commercial power. And this was one of the centres that traded everywhere in the world. It was also instrumental in the development of new technologies regarding dock and locking systems bit of canal work and also how to organise warehouses in relation to getting goods safely and effectively off and on on ship, how to store them in fireproof and secure locations as well within the warehouses of the docks. Now Liverpool had been a training port for several centuries but it wasn't until the middle of the 1700s that it really started to take off about the same time the Industrial Revolution was starting to kick off. One of the innovations that took place in Liverpool was the idea of actually having the warehouses right on the quayside, reducing time loading and unloading of materials. The docking system that was put into place meant that ships could land straight, go straight up to the warehouse basically, even when the tide was low, so they could lock it all off and still load and unload cargo. The location of Liverpool on the side of the Irish Sea allowed for much easier access to the Atlantic, particularly when Britain would be in not too friendly relationship with the French, meaning that travel through the English Channel could be a little awkward. Now, the warehouse system, particularly at the Albert Dock, was designed to be fireproof, hence modern brickwork, or what was then modern brickwork and safe and secure, which meant that it specialised in high value goods such as tea, silk, tobacco, ivory, spices and cotton. There was also another trade commodity that passed through the port of Liverpool, at least during its earlier days, and that was slaves. Liverpool was central to the transatlantic slave trade, where manufactured goods were shipped from Europe to West Africa, exchanged for African slaves who were then sent over to the Americas where they were exchanged for raw materials that were then brought over to Europe for processing and yeah it's a sadder part of the history that is told in the International Slavery Museum which is actually here at the Maritime City and explores the history of one of the darker periods of humanity. I mean, thankfully, Britain abolished the international slave trade in 1807, but for some reason didn't abolish slavery within its empire until 1833. Interesting. Even after the slave trade was abolished, Liverpool was still a central port and remained so right up until the sort of after the Second World War, well into the 20th century. The UNESCO World Heritage Area covers a place known as Pier Head along with most of the old docks, including the Albert Dock, and part of the old canal system, which is partially buried underground now, along with the existing but converted warehouses. They use mostly for commercial products and also residential um, areas. And a special mention needs to go to what's known locally as the Three Graces, the three major buildings on the waterfront. Okay, the first one that was constructed was the headquarters for the Mersey Dock and Harbour Board, which was completed in 1907 and became known as the Dock Office. The Cunard Building was constructed in 1916 and became the headquarters for the famous Cunard Shipping Company. And then of course, Liverpool's most famous landmark, the Liver Building, completed in 1911. Interesting note as well, the Liver Building, right behind me, was one of the earliest reinforced concrete structures that was built anywhere within the world. In fact, all three of these buildings use revolutionary technology of reinforced steel and concrete, given a veneer of granite or Portland limestone. And there are a number of museums in the area. In particular, there's the Maritime Museum, worth going to. 
explores a little bit of the history of the mercantile trade within from, from Liverpool and how the dock system operated. Also associated with that is the International Slavery Museum which explores the slave trade. There are also a few other museums within Liverpool. You've got the Liverpool Museum which explores just the general history of Liverpool and the life of Liverpool including the four most famous people from Liverpool. Can't imagine they will be along with the World Museum, which is a generic museum of all sorts of bits and pieces from around the world. They've got a particularly good in Egyptian section with some actual Egyptian mummies on display. So that's always worth a visit. Another note with the movement of peoples was Liverpool was often the major emigration port for people moving over to the Americas. And I'm talking people that voluntarily moving over, not people that were in slavery being shipped over. Now people came from all over the Europe, Central Europe in particular, to Liverpool to get aboard ships that would take them over to Canada or the United States. And particular mention is the Irish and hundreds of thousands of Irish refugees fleeing the potato famine in the 1840s made it over to Liverpool from Ireland and not all of them left actually. Liverpool developed a strong Irish community in the second half of the 19th century from all these Irish immigrants that were look basically in poverty and starvation. Um, but hundreds of thousands of them still made it from Liverpool over to the Americas. So key significance of why Liverpool made it onto the World Heritage List because it represents that period in time where Britain was the preeminent economic power in the world. And it represents a moment where shipping and warehousing systems and technologies were really entering the modern era, going from a system that pretty much existed since probably Roman times, but with the onset of the Industrial Revolution and mass production of goods and materials and shipping of raw materials and people. Liverpool was at the forefront of that industry. And that is your World Heritage Wednesday, Liverpool Maritime Mercantile City.